Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have a chance, head down into the show notes and find out all the ways you can support the podcast. The best way to do that is hit like and subscribe, whether you're on YouTube or if you're in your podcast app, make sure you hit subscribe. You know, get that daily, that weekly feed of uh, our lovely voices into your into your ears. Today, we we're talking about complaining. Now, Ariel, yeah. the people are listening. They're going, man, these guys are really getting into like a lot of parenting stuff and why are they doing that? Well, <laughs> it's because this is something we're going through. And, and it's, gosh darn it, it's our show. And we get to talk about the problems that we're having. Yeah, because I have to do a bunch of research for these shows. So that, it, you know, because we're not, we're not the experts. Oh, but... we're, we're not. Oh, Ariel, <laughs> don't break the fifth wall, fourth wall right here. Tell the people. Yeah, you know, so I end up doing a lot of research for these shows and to put together these notes. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to research the stuff we're dealing with. We've been dealing with distractions. That's why we did that two-part <laughs> episode. And you guessed it. We've been dealing with a lot of whining around here. Yes, as my lovely my lovely eight year old becomes a a preteen and starts to get. I don't know what yeah, happened. She issues. turned eight, and now the, the sass, sass machine is just so strong. It's sass mountain. I mean, yeah, and and then the little one <laughs> hears it, and then she starts doing it too, even though she's only four. So we've been dealing with a lot of complaining of late, <laughs> and that's so frustrating. I thought it would be great if we could do an episode about this. And, you know, I mean, there's obviously a lot of parenting stuff. This is what's kind of hard about it, right? Because there's a... A lot of the homeschool stuff blends with the right. parenting Right. I mean, there's issues. a parenting thing, too, here, right? So it's kind of both. This is the stuff they all outsource to the public schools, right? <laughs> yeah. That's why they go to the two years Well, of, until they come home with homework, and then you got to fight about it. I, I, you know what? Listen, I tried to get my own teaching certificate once, and, and I saw it, you know, the 401 class complaining, how to <laughs> how to beat your student without your parent knowing. <laughs> you know? We digress. I know. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is a hard one, because it is kind of where parenting and, and educating meet. Um, and sometimes that's really blurred. And so uh, this can be a real challenge. But definitely for, for us, this is one of the most frustrating things that I think we both deal with is that we've put all this effort into it, made these, you know, I've planned these lessons, you're executing the lessons or gosh, I to perfection, <laughs> I, you know, I finally get some time that I can actually step in and do a little bit of the homeschooling. And then they're like, complaining about what we're doing. It's like, really, guys, or, you know, you do all these fun things with her, you do all this art, and all this other great stuff and then you're like okay we got to do this math lesson and then it's like oh yeah. you know and they just start just really belly aching about the entire thing right so it is it can be really frustrating for us and we've been looking for some solutions and some ways to think about it so that we can you know tackle the challenge and still i mean try to be empathetic to how they're feeling and not get too frustrated so this is some stuff that we came up with and and hopefully this gave us a little bit of new perspective and hopefully it gives you some new perspective too absolutely you know when we're talking about problems you know things that were whether it's distractions or it's planning like in the episode we did a a few episodes ago about kanban we, we went ahead and built our own kanban board maybe ariel can take a picture of it and put it on the group if you haven't already you know these are the things that we are constantly trying to you know tackle problems that we get in our day-to-day the um, social emotional problems the evolution of our children as they go from little kids to older kids to high schoolers hopefully and then all you know get ready to be adults we're constantly having to tackle problems Mm -hmm. on top of being the educator and finding the curriculums and you know making sure we're we're being effective educators and all the various things the layer cake of of crazy that we all have to deal with as homeschoolers (laughs) You know, you think like, oh, we're going to talk about, you know, complaining. You know, how does that affect 
homeschoolers or homeschoolers are all, they just get it. Like, yeah, complaining all the time. Yeah, we get yeah, it. Seriously. It's not just, oh, they go to school and they come home and we deal with them complaining on doing their homework or we complain about, you know, taking a bath. I mean, good God, you haven't taken a bath in four days. I mean, come <laughs> on, kid. That never happens. That never happens. House. There is not a homeschooler that doesn't let their kid go to, yeah, no, absolutely. Four days. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, stuff happens, so, man. Stuff happens, man. You just, we get busy and then we're like, when was the last time you bathed? Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, I can't remember. This is the reality, Get in the man. shower, kid. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> and then they complain the whole way there. So, yeah. so, so let's... Like, these are the things. And so, like, like when we run into those problems... What's the first thing we have to do? We have to find the root cause of those problems. Yeah. And there's always some root cause. That's always what we're talking about with like, you know, they're struggling with this education, with this math thing. How do we root cause the problem, fix it, change something, tweak it? So in this case, we have complaining. So like, let's talk about root causes. Right. So there's kind of two main categories that, I, as, that I'm thinking about here, which is there's a bunch of stuff that's unrelated to homeschool at all. It wouldn't matter if you're homeschooling or doing anything else. And then there's stuff that's homeschool specific. So for the the stuff that's not related to homeschool, this is like, uh, g- there's a lot of general well-being of their body. Are they tired, sick, hungry, didn't get enough sleep? <laughs> those that, are, I mean, that's been one I think recently that well, our, those are huge that our us. eight-year-old is, she, you know, you put her into bed and and like i think she's listening to stories on google yes. and then she wakes up early and she listens to stories on google. as we're recording this i'm now going to go on to the google home and make sure yeah, that that not, isn't in going re- upstairs in, in real time yeah make sure she'll, <laughs> yes, come, because... she'll come down mom why did my google turn off uh sweetie it's a uh, 9 42 at night you need to be in bed because <laughs> mm-hmm. this is great because it says her room speaker and i can check that oh nope she's not listening to it so she is asleep now which is good very good very good you know you, you have those things like the the tiredness is one that i think we've been running headfirst into um it's it's amazing how my our youngest will i i will sit there and stare at my clock it'll be six fifty nine. And you'll hear the door fly open. Good morning. And oh, she, yeah. She's, she's a so mor- excited. She's such a morning person. Our oldest is not a morning yeah, person. Get out of my room. Yeah, I mean, like- she's been kind of like that, I mean, for a while. She's definitely my late riser, which is was always fine when she was little. Yeah. Um, but now we have the little one. And you're right. So are they sleepy? Are they are they ty- uh, tired, hungry? Um are they sick? Yeah. Uh, the other one is, are they uncomfortable in some way? I don't know if it's just our daughters. They love to sometimes dress up. And so they'll come in these elaborate outfits in the morning. And then oh, they're yeah. like itchy and uncomfortable in their like fancy dresses while they're trying to homeschool. So that's just, it doesn't matter that you were homeschooling. They're having to focus on anything would have been a problem. Um, the other thing is, have you had too many 11 days, yeah, we right? We talk about this all we the time. We talk about right? this a lot. It's like, okay, you know, there's days that are ones where we're doing absolutely nothing. You know, mom's sick. We do nothing. We're, we're mm-hmm. all home just being vegetables. You know, then there's days that are like 11 where they were go, go, go and do all kinds of things. And we find that definitely if they've had a day like that before homeschool and maybe a couple of days in a row, like they just got back from visiting Nana and Papa, that's the worst. Yeah. Um, or, you know, that's we, the worst. Yeah, we had a, we had a whole day, you know, last weekend we had a, a really big day. We had tons of activities and we went to uh, a musical and we had, we went to dinner. We had all kinds of things and people went to bed late the next day they were ruined. So, mm. you know, that kind of stuff can build. Um, also, is there some sort of anticipation or engagement with something that's, you know, outside of your home, like, oh, there's a, there's a birthday party this afternoon that they're very excited about yeah, or a sleepover next week. We yeah, have a sleepover coming yeah, up. Yeah. Oh, you know, for us, the entire month of December is a problem because there's going to be Christmas and yeah. there's going to be Santa and there will be presents. And we kind of like the whole month becomes kind of a problem because they're so they can see the Christmas tree at the corner of their eyes. They're sitting at the table. Right. Yeah, right. And so that can be really hard. So I think it's important to categorize the 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 root causes like okay there's a whole lot of unrelated to homeschools other stuff going on in your lives stress in your lives mm-hmm, too mm-hmm. with with your family situation things going on if you have an illness in the family all that kind of stuff is yep. totally unrelated and then you've got the stuff related to homeschool like they're just bored with it. They're not engaged in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have a lot of frustration with challenging material. It's causing them to complain about doing it. Maybe they're just tired. They did, they haven't had enough breaks, like fatigue from doing too many lessons in a row. Sometimes we get going and we don't realize that you know maybe they need a break. I think fatigue also with curriculum, like you've been doing the same thing every single week. Yeah, you got to exactly. change it up a little bit sometimes. Right. Yeah. They're bored. They've We've been doing the same thing. Uh, and, you know, there's a host of motivational issues. Yep. So that stuff can be related to, you know, even if nothing else is going on in your world, 
that stuff can cause some some problems. Yeah, I mean, just imagine all the things that we all have to do in our daily lives, like take out the trash, clean, you know, mow the lawn, fix the fix the Christmas lights for the seventh night oh in a gosh, row. They're not working again tonight. I'm and, so yeah, upset. I know. And so, like the. <sighs> You just imagine like the things that we have to do on a daily basis and the frustration that kind of creates for us and we have to be the adults and power through it. Well, the kids don't have that level of sophistication to be able to control their emotions. I, you know, that's something I always tell my daughter. The only thing you can really control is your emotions and how right. you how you respond to things. Everything else is out of your control. That's right. And you know, if you can, you know, figure out how to do that one day, you'll you'll stop complaining. You'll be able to be a little bit. You'll be able to, you know, right. to deal with things a little bit better and right. and whatnot. But they're so young, they just can't do that. And they're very short term, right? They oh, just yeah. have a very narrow focus. So I think what's really important from everything that I read was like that we try. It's really hard sometimes, but we try to be empathetic and find the foundation for where this this attitude is coming from but how long does your empathy last when the hip cocks <laughs> the hand goes on the hip and you get the left hand out and oh, she's yeah, mouthing she's, what she's, you're she, saying yeah she uses her hand to act like you're talking like wah, 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 as wah. if we don't see it oh and then the head rocks back and oh, forth yes, too yes, like a yeah. bobblehead yeah she so she's just like yeah i do i, I feel like the teacher feel, in peanuts wah, 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 no, wah, wah, wah. no I, I go right to the homer simpson strangling bart <laughs> yeah exactly you know, like, oh my gosh it please. can be so frustrating you know and we can see longer term like oh come on kid it's 20 minutes of math just buck up you yeah, know yeah, right. but th there could be some causes for this and if we can try to get to the bottom of them you know it'll make our lives easier so let's let's start going into some some things that can be you know unrelated to homeschool right we talked yeah. about stuff making sure that everyone is fed oh hangry is a big problem yeah oh hangry is so and homeschoolers snack more than i don't they want to snack constantly we actually just did a new um we found this was a problem making sure that they're fed and not just that they're fed but they're fed on good things oh, yeah. we noticed that our kids would ask for a snack they'd run to the pantry and they'd invariably grab something that was sugar or carbs yeah. so we went to the store and we grabbed some um clear bins where were we going to the home goods right yeah we went to home goods and we put these clear bins into the refrigerator mm -hmm. and into the bins we put things that were were protein and vegetable snacks mm -hmm. and so when they go to ask for a snack we, we say like, hey, go to the fridge. And they know yeah. that they have these two bins where we have, you know, baby bell cheeses and we have uh, baby carrots and we have yogurts and we have things that we know are good. Mm -hmm. And that's really helped. So not just making sure that they're fed, but making sure that they're fed with good things and that you have it easy for them to get to was a so, big one. Something's a little more satiating and you're exactly. not going to get amped up with a bunch of sugars. I, right. One of those things I think... Uh, a couple of months ago at Halloween, my my mom gave them a bunch of, you know, they did kind of like a trick-or-treat thing in the in the grass yeah, or something. Of. And she's like, oh, I didn't get them any candy. But she got them a bunch of Rice Krispie treats. Right. She's, oh, it's for their lunches. But then they just went crazy with them as snacks. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then they were just all hopped up. You definitely, <laughs> some kids respond differently to sugars, and, sugars yeah. and dyes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. you know your kids best. But making sure that they're fed and that they're fed with good you know protein or nourishing foods that will help mm -hmm. them think and mm -hmm. help their brain focus is great the other thing is making sure that they're all in comfortable clothing we tell our kids hey go get in go get in comfy we're going to be doing homeschool like oh if you want to dress up for going out later that's great but right yeah. now we're getting comfy and so they do our daughter she does a whole lot better when she's wrapped in a blanket she's kind of she gets cold but also she needs to not be in her her nighttime clothes. No, she needs to be it's dressed. It's weird, like her mind shifts if she's still in her like pajama pants and her shirt. Yeah. Even though she's wrapped up, she's still in sleepy mode. Mm -hmm. I gotta send her upstairs to say, gotta get some pants, gotta get a shirt yeah. on. Brush and then your you teeth can and get... and then come back down with your blanket. And yep. it's it's something weird, just like flips in her mind. It's absolutely it's kind of it strange. Does. Yeah. Making sure that they're not cold. They got socks on their feet. You know, yeah. I mean, it seems really basic, but they won't they'll just sit down at the table and start complaining about stuff. They won't actually tell you that it's because their feet are cold, right? <laughs> they, they have this bad disposition. They just, they they can't pinpoint that kind of stuff. So we we always try to like set ourselves up for success by making mm -hmm. sure that they're they're comfortable, that they've, you know, the house is warm enough, they've eaten and it's been good food and they didn't just eat, you know, Lucky Charms for breakfast and well, nothing else. And a know? lot of times with these intangibles that we're talking about outside of homeschool, especially with you with families that have multiple kids, and I see this with my two, the minute somebody is starting to be complaining or frustrated or distracted, oh gosh, and, it poisons and, the well. It poisons the well and they start, you know, 
getting at each they, other. Uh, yeah, they fight or they, they fight. feed off each other, and then everyone's in a bad mood. Exactly, and I, kind of you know. yeah. There's kind of a feedback loop in that. Oh, man, it's terrible. Sometimes you gotta. I just have to separate them and Absolutely. be like, you gotta go over here and do this thing, and we're gonna come over here and do this thing because you guys are just like really amping up on each other. And I think that's good advice. If you've got one that's causing a problem, and that negative attitude can bleed to the others, you might want to try to separate, mm-hmm. figure out that issue. So oh that gosh. before it poisons everybody, then you've got, you know, three or four kids, you've got to all get back on track it's instead al- of just one. It's almost like a, the idea of like pre- preventative medicine. Yeah. Like, a, you know, a, was it a pound of prevent? Uh, an, an ounce, ounce of, of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's right. And very similar mentality here is you got it. And I've told you this a lot of times, like if you can get ahead of it or if you can anticipate it, yep. um, sometimes you'll like go to the store and it'll be out of control and, um, and you'll have some issues. I'm like, well, if you can you know, go here and, and come with a backpack with activities and maybe a couple snacks, a couple things to do and just like have that in your mind to have things to maybe kind of distract kids or, you know, reposition them in some, uh, in a better way or a better light. You can alleviate a lot of these problems. Right. It's, I know it's really, have a game plan, have a game plan. You know, obviously the Mike Tyson thing, everybody has a plan. It's like a punch in the face, but you know, it's, you know, I always tell you, try to get get out ahead of it if you can. And yes. I think complaining and distractions and things that we've talked about in the last few weeks, I think that's a really powerful thing that you can do, especially if you're yeah. getting into like, oh, they've had 11 days, you know, before mm-hmm. they've, we're coming into the holidays. Like we've, what we've said is you have these built-in distractions that are just right on top of everything. I know it's really hard because you're busy. We're adults. We're having to manage a lot of things. And sometimes you forget, oh, I can't put my backpack together the day, the night before. I don't put the lunches together. I don't get the snacks together. I don't get homeschool all set up the day yeah, before. Because we're so busy right now. We're so busy. But like, it's almost like those moments where, in that sense, you want to do more prep work because you know that there's a possibility for tomorrow that if you're not prepared, it's going to go off the rails. And well. And it's almost like you have to do more prep work when you know there's big things like this. Like Yeah, or you have to adjust your expectations, which I think yeah. is the next point, really. Yeah. If you know you've got holidays or you have big things going on or everyone in your house has been sick, whatever, you know, you may just have to adjust what mm-hmm. you think you're going to get done. You know, maybe... Well, and, and that's a great point because... Like, or adjust the times that you're going to homeschool. Maybe you, oh, you yeah. break your routine if you have to because you've got extenuating circumstances. Well, I mean, for... I, I'm thinking inside my head, how much homeschool do I have left in the year? I mean, we're right now it's December 7th, right? Um, Don't tell the people how late we recorded this episode. Well, at least it's Listen, not- we are behind and I was super sick. My Guys, voice is still weird. At least it's not December 10th and tomorrow's the 11th. We've got to <laughs> we're out ahead a little bit. Uh, yeah, Pearl Harbor Day, you know, so <laughs> you know, it's a good time. Um, the, the getting out ahead of things and looking and saying, well, I really, in reality, I have about maybe 10 more days of homeschool and then I'm done. Right. I'm done until the new year because there's re- literally nothing I can do in yep. the last two weeks. Um, maybe read some books and things like that, but like I'm not getting any reading or math work or anything. Like I'm shutting it down next Friday and it's shut down for two weeks. Um, I might be able to do some more ancient civs and stuff like that because that's just reading books and my daughter loves reading books. But you know, you're right. I got to change my expectations. I got 10 right. days to do as much math and reading as I can and then. It's all shut down. Right. And when you know you're going to have one of those big days, you have those 11 days, you know, you need to plan a one day. And maybe that means that you come back and start with art and other things that are really engaging because you know that they've just been super amped up. Maybe you go really quiet. Maybe you play quiet music. Maybe Mm -hmm. you have a a poetry tea time that day. Or, you know, you, you might need to take it down. You can't just... It's, it's funny because we go on vacation or something and then we go right back to work on Monday, yeah. right? You know, that's what's expected of us as adults. And that's we why just, we now factor in a vacation from our vacation. It's true. Yeah. But we like, you know, we go through it. We slog through it. Sure, we might need more coffee that day, but we go through it. Yeah. But our kids just, they, they're they not that resilient, especially the younger they are. Mm-hmm. This gets better, I think, the older they get. But, you know, it's it's really hard when they're young. So really, you know, make a light day. And planning that reset day after travel or visiting grandma is just, even if you didn't have an 11 the day before, if you were visiting anyone, just plan, plan a reset day. Like, just trust us. (laughs) We've done, and we have, we have two grandparents that live in the state and our kids do go and stay with them. Mm -hmm. And every time it doesn't matter if they just lounged around and watched movies, the day we get them home. They are just, they're ruined for homeschool that day. And we have to really do a reset day. So those are some unrelated factors that you may run into. Let's get more into the meat of it. We're homeschool podcast. Let's talk about homeschooling related things. Um, Number one thing at first is, you know, routine is important. 
Routine, routine, routine. Not all kids respond exactly the same, but most kids really like to know what's coming. I know we like to know what's coming. If you have an agenda for the day, then they know, okay, I'm going to do math and then I'm going to do art and then I'm going to do this. And they can kind of see their way through it, I think. Like our daughter today, um, I had my full day. Today was a Thursday and I had the whole morning with her and we were able to do our reading and our math. We did a bunch of ancient civ. And then we had to go pick up sister from preschool, go to dance class, go back to strings. It was a big day, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, if we can get all of our big stuff done this morning, uh, when we go to dance class, I'll do some ancient civ reading with you. And then after that, you're done. And so she was really excited to know. Yeah, she could see that light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, she goes, oh, after strings class, you know, when she does violin, we come home, she knew I'm free. And she came right home. She went right to the closet, got her Legos out, yeah, got her headphones ask. in. She was just didn't like, even ask because she goes, I've already earned this. I've done my violin. Mm-hmm. I've done my dance. I've done my my math and reading. I've done all my stuff. And she knew she did. And she worked hard and, and earned it and because we had that schedule built out. I put right. it right down on the table the morning. I said, here are the things you need to do. You know what they are. Go do the dishes. Go clean your room. And she just went off and did it because she goes, I know I'm going to get you know two hours of audiobook and a bunch of Lego time because sister's not going to be here. Sister's now at grandma's house and I get my own quiet time. Sister's not going to bother me. And she mm-hmm. was really looking forward to that. And that drove us right through Absolutely. today with the, yeah, so what if we you, were doing. Whether you have, a, whether you have a, a day that's normal routine or whether you have a different day, yeah. setting that agenda and letting them know what's coming, that always helps us get less complaining out of our kiddos. Yeah, the Kanban board and in general, the Kanban board. The Kanban us. board has been very helpful. If you haven't yeah. listened to our Kanban episode, we did such a great job with that episode. We convinced ourselves <laughs> and we made our daughter a Kanban board and we made ourselves a Kanban board for our office, yeah, which right actually has been fantastic. Yes. Um, so that's worked out really well. If you can, the more you can stick to your routine in general, the better. The yeah. more you know, you can, the kids know. And even if things change different days, you got co op classes one day or you have, mm-hmm. you know, a music lesson one day or whatever. You know, if the if at least the kind of the morning you can try to be consistent for that, you know, at least the beginning of your day. I think if we get a good start, usually our kids are kind of they're better, they're better at it. They know what to expect. And that that consistency really helps us because it's not like otherwise they feel like you're springing it on them. You're like, oh, yeah. okay, and now we're doing reading. And they're like, oh, and for them it could go on forever, right? They don't know yeah. that we only have 15 minutes in mind. And even if we tell them I only have 15 minutes in mind. They can't really conceptualize that. At least our eight-year-old still can't. Like fifteen minutes might as well be two hours. She just can't. She can't figure that out. No, she can't, she doesn't understand that. And you're right because it's there's just if they don't. Uh, we know how many how often kids can get disrupted by just changing and, and pivoting if they don't understand one. But we also have a lot of people who are listening who may have neurodiverse kids who have um, you know serious issues when you when you pivot and change right and, yeah and the routine and knowing what's coming and the anticipation and understanding of you know what is expected and what is going to come for that day is almost paramount. It's like the number one thing you have to do is yeah. let them know what's coming so that nothing disrupts their emotions or they feel like they're out of control and whatnot. It's super powerful. And I found that that really helps my daughters just to know what's coming for the day. Absolutely. We used to do that. Even when our daughters were little, we would yeah. when we put them to bed at night. We would tell them what was going to be happening the next day. And it was really nice because then they, they would know when they woke up and even our, our youngest still asks, what's for breakfast tomorrow? Because she gets really upset. Well, she's also food motivated. She's very food motivated. She's the lab of our family. She's the lab um, of our family. <laughs> as we have a lab sleeping at our feet. Um, but yeah, you know, like she wants to know that because she'll be really bummed in the morning if she had her heart set on something and that's not what's for breakfast. Exactly. So the morning well, before, we're like... Seriously angry. If you really if she angry. says like, Daddy, I, I don't know what's happening right now. I know there's Eggos and, and yogurt and I love Eggos and yogurt. But you told me it was oatmeal. Right. It's oatmeal this morning. Why am I getting yogurt? Yeah, she gets really upset. She's very confused and sort of angry. Like, Dad, you promised. And she will whine and complain and cry. You you Bluey promised oatmeal today. Oh, Bluey promise is a big deal. That's a big deal. Those of you who watched Bluey, the (laughs) second or third season, you know, Bluey promise, you cannot break. Next one one would be like boredom or, you know, lack of engagement. If if they're having those issues, they may cause a lot of complaining and issues and things like that. Yes, this one's kind of hard. We really have to assess whether this is a new problem or does it recur every time that you use a certain material or a curriculum choice. Um, So 
you know, if well, that's... there's always a cur- there's all al- let's be honest, there's always some curriculum that the kid isn't digging at the moment. Like I, I think that's true. Yeah. It's never all harmony. You can never please them all the time. And and you have to kind of separate. Is it the curriculum they don't like or is it the subject? Because I think Or is it you? <laughs> I think in general, like I, I don't think it would matter what reading curriculum we did. No. That's the most challenging subject for our daughter. She's gonna complain about that, like kind of no matter what, mm-hmm. because everything else comes easy to her and that one doesn't. And so I think this one is one you have to really be careful with and really assess it. Is it is it happening consistently? It's always happening every time we pull out math. Uh, maybe I'll try doing some math worksheets or something different. Maybe I'll change my approach with it and see if I still get the same pushback. And if so, then maybe that's because it's challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, is this an opportunity where we have to say, hey, I need you to show a little grit. Mm. And that's kind of... God, it's such a hard thing to. This is it's such that's a the razor's hard, edge. That I yeah, feel like, we always like walk. do you you want to be empathetic? You want to help them get to a place where they're they're uh, contented and they feel like they can move forward, you know, and they're not upset about it. But you also want to teach them that you know sometimes in life, yeah. like every day as an adult, yeah. I have to do stuff I don't want to do. And I got to do that. Put on your pink rhinestone boots and let's get going. Yeah, you got to do it. So sometimes it's like, I don't really care that you don't want to unload the dishwasher. This is your chore and you must do it. And you need to have some wherewithal to have some grit to do it. So this is a really tough one for me because there's... Do you think I want to be your unpaid Uber driver all day long? (laughs) Yeah. So this is the tough one, I think, because this is where I struggle between, you know, is this a moment where I need to show empathy or is this a moment where I need to say... Just get it done, right? <laughs> and this You're is You're the empathetic, I'm the walk it off. <laughs> you know, well, I think it's it's really it's really hard and I don't from moment to moment know exactly what to do. I like to my goal is and I don't always do this, but my goal is to start from a place of empathy. And once I've determined that their reason is crummy, then I go to grit. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, I start with not, I start with like, hey, is there a reasonable explanation? And when I find out that there's just nothing reasonable that she just really would rather do Legos, then I'm like, just just do your math, do your math. right? So, I, I but I want to give, I want to approach them giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm not always I know we are not always successful at doing that, but it's my goal and I'm going to keep striving for it. OK, so next one is frustration with challenging stuff. We talked about um, we talked about when stuff's challenging. If you really think it's a challenge issue, they're not bored. It's just really challenging. That's where we have to, I think, think about, you know, should I change my approach? Should mm-hmm. I? It doesn't mean I need to do a different curriculum. Does not mean I need to take a break? Does it mean that maybe I you know, tested my kid into X level of math and maybe that was too high. Yeah. Right. Is it, there's a, there was a great, I was like, I think it was a, I don't know if it was a podcast or a book or something I read. I read about this balance between mastery and challenge Mm -hmm. where, you know, if you don't challenge them enough, they can be bored, right? Which could be another reason for the boredom, right? Maybe not challenging them enough. But if you challenge them so much that they never have an opportunity to show their mastery, then they never get that sense of confidence that they're really doing a good job. So there's this balance between, you know, letting them show mastery. So if you really determine that they're really challenged by what they're doing, you might take an opportunity to let them prove their mastery of the things that they do know well to give them that confidence and that foundation to then build from. And we found with our daughter with reading that that helped us a whole lot. Yeah. And then things like with math, if if she's struggling a little bit about, you know, struggling with... A certain concept or you know we, uh, right now we're deep into fractions and fractions are you know analogous to you know division they're essentially the same thing and you know she's she's getting a little like stuck on it and i was like oh you're, you're getting frustrated because i just don't think we have had enough experience with division let's go ahead and, and i'll like slow it down double mm-hmm. back do a lot more warm-up problems and i've noticed that you know, she's starting to get a lot more comfortable with it today. I think it was a real big breakthrough today where she was really starting to understand how fractions, it was a right start math sections where they were talking about, we were talking about fractions, doing fraction charts, but I was able to look ahead and go, oh, okay, great. So they used rulers, they used time, they used money, they used a uh, liquid. So gallon, half gallon quart, um, and all the, and then, and then music, because right now she's in, she has a strings class where she's doing violin. And all of a sudden she saw fractions applied all around her. And she goes, ah, I totally understand why we do these types of things. And so I think 
you know, it took me a little bit, a few weeks of like really doing a lot of, a lot of review and a lot of like kind of warm up work to kind of get her back into it. So there was kind of that frustration where it wasn't necessarily challenging, but I think we were maybe moving a little faster than she needed to be. And I had to, I had to recognize that and double back and do some kind of looping, um, uh, warm up activities that just gets her, you know, revitalized and, and understanding right. what we're doing. And I think when you, when you do that, that time to connect with her, I think mm-hmm. one of the things you do really well that, that I think is really critically important is emphasizing the partnership. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes when, especially our daughter, and I think other kids feel this way too, they're really frustrated. They feel like they feel so much weight on themselves and like they're mm-hmm. all alone. And so reminding them that, Hey, this is a partnership. We're going to work this out together. If this is too challenging, let's find out what about this is giving you this level of frustration and you know how can we work through it together. Emphasizing that partnership is really, I think, an important part of empathizing. And that's what you do a really good job of. It's like, okay, let's get let's get to the root of what's going on. Yeah, I can see it in your eyes. You're not really understanding. You're, you're nodding your head, but I really see it that you're not understanding. And mm-hmm. I think we need to just spend a little bit more time. And, you know, a lot of times for us, slowing down feels like, oh, we're losing ground, but it's not. I'm, I'm Yeah. Measured I'm go- against who? Yeah. I'm going back you and gotta always remind ourselves. I'm just building a better foundation so that we can go higher. And yeah. that's really, yeah. you gotta, you always got to put it in perspective I of like, like the work that you're doing is just, you're reinforcing the foundation. And I think that's, you know, probably the most important thing there. Um, fatigue and lack of breaks. I think that is a big thing that I've seen. Oh, yeah. It's a huge problem. Yeah. So sometimes you may have a, a child like you know, I'm starting to see this with my daughter now is that, okay, she sees what she has to do and she just wants to run and do it as fast as humanly possible. And there's not enough care involved in there. Like, for example, today we have, I have this like kind of a math workbook um, that I got from the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is just great, you know. maybe For like throwaway math workbooks. Throwaway math workbooks. It's like you got to go there and, and get it. So like multiplication, division, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, they're simple. Throw them in a bag. Throw them in a bag. Take it's, them to grandma's. I, I open it up. I have her just do one page. Just kind of a couple of warm-up problems. And sometimes, I mean, the problems are, you know, the pages look really nice. They're laid out well. But it's like there's a pattern in the problems. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. oh, you know, what's a... There wasn't a lot of care and thought that went into the yes. Dollar Tree books. That's <laughs> true. That's like 9 divided by 3. That's 3. Well, then it's 12 divided by 3. 4. 15 divided by 3. 5. And all of a sudden she goes, oh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, yeah. And then she'll just write in the answers because she sees the pattern. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Take the care. You know, you know, be, be present. You know, understand mm-hmm. what you're doing. But she's like focusing on just running as fast as possible because she, she wants to get everything done right. and we don't take enough breaks and she's just looking for the easiest way out of the problem. Well, sometimes you, know, you find work. that like your kid's doing really well, you know, you've, you've done like one subject, two subjects. Okay. Yeah. And they're doing great and they're working hard and you're like, okay, come on, let's just take this momentum and keep going. But then you don't realize that you going to burn her out. Yeah. You've burned them out and you've pushed them over. So it's really important in your, your agenda or your routine that you plan both mental and physical break yeah. because just saying, Oh, Hey, let's take 10 minutes, do whatever you want. And we'll, you know, reconvene. That doesn't, that doesn't always cover it. The younger they are, I think, especially they really need the physical nature, yeah. but even as adults, I mean, sometimes we'll just tell our girls, Hey, let's go out, uh, let's go out and check the mail yeah. and we'll walk down to the mailbox. And that's just enough for them to have gotten away from the table and mm-hmm. to take a break and then they can come back to it. And it goes you know, back, it goes back fresh air. I really like, you know, we, we all have kids who have hobbies. Like if I tell my daughter, go do something, she's like, Lego and I and I know that's an hour hour and a half right mm-hmm. that's what she wants is that length I'm mm-hmm. like I can't afford to give you that much time right right it's not a 10 minute it's thing. not a 10 or 15 minute thing and that's where I really like the hobbies like our daughter has the dance we have the strings and we have basketball and we right. have we have all these things that she's working on and, and whatever it is in your life whatever it might be it could be some sewing it could be gardening whatever it is for your child try to build in some hobbies that can be done quickly and mm-hmm. and and a tasking that, that you can have for a, a daily activity that is 10 15 minutes long that doesn't require a lot of like build up and a lot of breakdown right like for her basketball hey go get your basketball and dribble in the driveway or in the in the garage right go and do your iris step dance go and do your violin violin's a little bit more of like you got to set it up and take yeah. it out and everything but you get my idea that you have these little things that they're constantly working and perfecting and, and these things can change over time. They don't, and they don't have to be as serious as what we're talking about. They could be something else like, 
oh, go do your mural work or go do your collage work. Go work 10 minutes on your crochet. Sometimes we'll tell the kids when it's summer and the weather's nice, go out and swing in the backyard for 10 minutes. I'll come get you when when it's time to come in. We've had an absolute deluge of rain. I felt like we haven't left this house in a week. So it has been really difficult. Like I, I can empathize with, you know, you guys who live in a cold weather, maybe in like Minnesota and you get snowed in or in Alaska, you're snowed in. You're not really leaving your house. Yeah. You know, I just, I took my girls to McDonald's the other day just to get them out of the house and go play in the play area. And it was just pouring rain. Like we don't get pouring rain here in Seattle. That's yeah. kind of a, that was That's a, sleep, a movie myth. sleepless in Seattle was, was a myth. It doesn't rain like that here. No, it's just like a, misty. it's a misty sprinkle rain, drizzle, drizzle rain, but it's all the time. Yeah. And, but we have had absolutely like, we've had tropical rain type of stuff right yeah, it's been all flooding a bunch and so, of a bunch of flooding but so, we've even gotten them in the garage to say hey yeah. dribble the basketball in the garage or you know put on your skates and you can skate in the garage so there are ideas and definitely yeah. some kids respond and I there think, may be skills or activities that they want to master it's yeah. a, and it's a great opportunity to do that mm-hmm. or just to give them time to to have freedom you know if your kids have a fort hey, go play in your fort for a few minutes so Some kids definitely respond a lot better to the outside time and need that time and may even need that time before you start for the day. (laughs) They, you know, we, we know in the summertime, our kids do a lot better if we get outside for a half hour first and go for a walk or bike Mm -hmm. ride and then start homeschool. So it kind of depends on all kids are different, but just make sure that just because things are going well, that you don't push too far. Yeah. And I I empathize with it. If I'm not doing my, if I can't get my hour workout every day, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm running out and I'm thinking, well, if I feel that way, they've got to feel something like that too. Right. Everyone has their own needs. So let's talk a little bit about motivational issues because this can be kind of a broad topic. Yeah. This is the big one. This is the big one. And I think a lot of complaining, especially with respect to homeschooling comes from this kind of idea of, you know, motivation. Are they, you know, are they generally motivated by the subject today? Like, are, are right. they into it? Is it it's like they're unmotivated to do homeschool all the time? Or yeah. is it just today? Or is it just a specific subject? Yeah. There's a lot of like kind of root cause type stuff that you have to get mm-hmm. to about what is unmotivating to them. And that can be a really tough thing to find. Well, and we've talked about that with like the curriculum and trying to root cause what, what that aspect of of you know, what are you doing on a daily basis is bothering them or causing some uncertainty or confusion. There, It could be a, a, a many different reasons why why it's not motivating. Yeah. And we're going to be looking into uh, intrinsic motivation because it's something that we're really interested in for our girls. Um, so expect an episode carrots. coming on that. We'll, we'll title it Carrots and Sticks with uh, no. lots with extra sticks. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, this is a really hard thing to do. And how can we you know, how can we breed motivation in our kids and how can they be intrinsically motivated? It's something that I've seen with our daughter is, you know, making it relevant to what she does. Um, what she's interested what in. What she's interested in. Something that she can connect to and and remember and, mm-hmm. and, and, and tie back to. I think that's something that is true about all modes of learning is to how does this thing apply to me or how right. can I... How am I going to use this? Or even just as simple as um, something I used to do with um, a lot of tutoring that I was doing um, way back. Um, I did some tutoring for calculus and physics and whatnot. And a lot of times I was running into working professionals. I had like um, a nurse that I was tutoring and a few other people that were in kind of a professional um, job. And, and I said, and I always try to say, okay, we're talking about some abstract math here, but how can I relate this to what you do you know you're a nurse okay we're talking about rates of change let's talk about a drip line going into an iv into a patient Mm -hmm. right there's a certain rate of the dripping and so i'll plot it and i say okay based on their weight they have it to have a different you know amount of material you know Mm -hmm. whatever the medicine is and here's how it changes over time and as they as they're larger people they, they get more and they're smaller they get less and she goes oh i get that because I experience that in my right. day-to-day basis. You know, how can you take the learning, whatever it is right now, even ancient civilization um, or, or, you know, math or reading, how can you like, you know, show them? Like today we were talking about, we're doing parts of speech with with um, with my daughter with reading and we were trying to talk about verbs and nouns and like the difference between the two. And we're, we're talking a lot about sentences. Like, oh, give me a sentence, you know, give me another sentence. And we're talking about like putting it out and showing her like, okay, these are, it's not just the words. It's just not the sounds. It's these, these words have are in clusters. They, there are types of words, you know, these are nouns and these are verbs. These are adjectives and we use them all the time and you use them perfectly because you've been listening to Mm -hmm. speech for so long. 
now you're starting to put names to the types of words. And it was like just starting to really explain things to her as mm-hmm. opposed to, okay, what's a noun? That's a person, place, or thing. And you yeah. know, <laughs> let's, 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 you know, quiz you on, on what is a noun again? You know, it's like, no, 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 let's like talk about the words. Let's talk about things and have yeah. you give me sentences about things you like. Okay, you're reading the Star Wars book right now on your audio book. Tell me about what's happening in that one and let's make a couple of sentences. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I can. This would be a great one for like Mad Libs Mad or, Libs, yeah, yeah. Um, what is it? Um, the was Mr. Bernard's wild card game. You yeah, know, like like yeah. one of those kind of language games. Uh, this would be a great a great thing to do. This is also, I think, where we as a family have really leveraged YouTube because mm-hmm. we have found a YouTube video about just about everything we've been learning, and it helps them. Our kids are highly visual, so it really helps them to connect with it to go. Oh, that's what you're talking about, yeah. you know, in a variety of ways and nice short content. So we use well, YouTube Premium and, for that. And the, and the thing is, is if I don't put this little <laughs> extra bit of work in, sometimes I find we start to have complaining. Like if I'm not doing that connection work, mm-hmm. you know, it just becomes this. They just get bored. It's bored or they just don't understand why you're teaching me this. Mm-hmm. Like like with math. It's like, a waste of time. I keep telling her, I go, you're just scratching the surface of math right now like it's we're so you're just at the beginning and Mm -hmm. it's like every time we learn something new and she's like why is this i'm like i'm like pushing back the fog and i'm showing you here's a new little area and push another little bit of fog here's another one and there's all these little rules and they all cross apply and all this type of stuff and we're just making it bigger and bigger and there's just there's so much more that you don't even know and it's exciting because i know what's coming and it's really really fun and like wow you're a nerd dad because you like math, but <laughs> you know there's a lot of things that you you you're you're opening up to them and they just don't understand why, yeah. and it can cause some complaining, it can cause motivation issues, it can cause like a dis- distrust or dislike of what you're teaching. I I find if you just do that little bit extra work and try to make that connection, I think it really really helps. And I know it's hard. Absolutely. It's like it's like oh you're asking another thing of me, you know, Mister Matt. You know, it's hard to do that, but. I think trying to put things into simplest terms that they can they can grok and carry forward. It's sort of like with basketball. When I coach basketball, I just try to simplify the game down because I know when they're going to be on the court, they're going to be terrified. I've had multiple girls on the team last year. When they stepped on the court, you just see it. It's like deer in the headlights, mm-hmm. total fear. You pull them aside, you go, listen, that girl has the same band you have. Don't leave her. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens, you mm-hmm. don't know what's going on chase that girl <laughs> whether it's on offense or defense just chase her okay yeah just simplifying it making things easier making things simpler simpler help the focus help the focus and, and it gets them out of the fear which can then cause complaining or or uncertainty or you know resistance in some respect these are the things little things that i think we need to we need to learn how to do Absolutely. The next one we wanted to talk about is goals and rewards. This one has worked out really well for us. Oh, yeah. You know, breaking down your your curriculum into really achievable goals and celebrate those small victories that you get. Oh, just, yeah. you know, anything that you get every level. This is where, you know, if, if your kid's the kind that really responds to the star sheet or whatever of the lessons, you know, go for it. I mean, yeah, yeah. if that's what motivates them. Our daughter, we have a reading chart on the fridge. And she when she that. reads a book, she fills it out. And every 10 books, she gets a new book. We'll go buy her a new book. And so she's really excited because she's planning the next book that she's going to buy. And that's her reading time. So you know, she, she's really goal oriented. And she's respect. very goal oriented. Yes. She loves that. And that's why I think the Kanban's worked really well yeah. for us too, because she knows, okay, my goal is to get this done. And then the reward that she gets, right? She gets that new book after 10, 10 books she's read. She gets the Lego and audiobook time after she's finished with the things she needed to do for the day. Not all kids are motivated by the rewards. Um, but ours definitely works really well with us, especially, you know, get up in the morning and say, Hey, remember, you know, you've got, You've got to, you know, get that, get that uh, homework done for your co-op class. Our little list is like this too. Yeah. yeah rewards work really well. Yeah. And, and, you know, she'll go, uh, and I'll say, Hey, remember that reward when you get it all done, what are you going to do? And she's like, Oh yeah, I can't wait to see how that audiobook ends, you know? And, and that really motivates her and helps us to stymie the inevitable complaining that we would get. Yeah. Yeah. Getting, getting those little victories also, you know, maybe articulating, you know, you talk about goals, but articulating what's coming in the curriculum, like, hey, over the next week, we're going to be focusing on, you know, long U sounds, because Mm -hmm. that's what, you know, the all by reading is doing or whatever curriculum you're doing, saying like, hey, the next like 10 days, we're going to be really focusing on addition and subtraction, or, 
you know, if you guys are doing algebra, it's solving for X in a simple equation or factoring or whatever it might be say, okay, we're going to focus the next 10 days on this topic. And right. every day you just keep reminding them, we're doing this, we're doing this until we master it. And then we're going to move on. Like setting goals, setting expectations, right. I think is a big thing. Yeah. And if this is hard now, hey, you know, just know that once we, once you can show mastery of this, great, then we're going to go to the next thing. Well, we have thing. two more weeks of Greece left, you know, mm-hmm. because we're doing Greece now. We have the massive. We're going to end with a big Greek dinner and, you know, that's exactly. what we're going to do. Yeah. Find what motivates your, your kids. If, if goals food, and re- food motivation. Again. Yeah. Ours are food motivated. If goals and rewards work for you. Awesome. Yep. Um, the next thing is if you can encourage autonomy, oh this is great because is they don't really complain yeah. about the things that they themselves tell themselves to do, right? Like it's it's when we tell them that they have to do something that they really, we find that they really whine and complain. Now that we have the Kanban and she knows the things that are on the board, a lot of times she's looking for herself. She's doing them independently, so we don't have to hear the oh, inevitable, oh, oh I got to oh, do the dishes. I get the snapping of, come on, Dad, let's go. We got to get this done. Come on, Dad, we got to go. Right. We got to go. I'm like, uh, I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, so so there, there's the autonomy and knowing what needs to be done, but also the learning process and what we're going to learn. You know, if... If there are choices that can be made, obviously, like there's not a choice with math. We're going to do math. But if there's a choice for, you know, what we're going to learn in science or Mm -hmm. what we're going to study in history or something, if you can give them a choice, giving them that choice, the autonomy to make it really helps them to have investment in that process. And, you know, when we before we started ancient civilizations, we're like, hey, we're thinking about starting this. And she was like, absolutely. I want to learn all about ancient civs. I want to do Greece. I want to do Rome. It's like, okay, cool. Yep, perfect. You know, so whenever you can get that buy-in, it just makes, it smooths the whole way because they, they definitely know they had a part in it. Another one is celebrating progress. I think understanding and giving accomplishment, even weekly or, or what daily, what a, man, daily man. regularly acknowledging there are when, when she's had a good homeschool day, I know, could I get, I get home from work and we're you, asked, having, you asked her today. We're ha- yeah, and we're having dinner, and you specifically say, you know what, today, Ariel, boy, our girls just had a great homeschool day. Hey, you know, daughter, tell her all about the stuff you did today. And then our oldest just excitedly tells me about, yeah, I got my math done, and then I did all my Lego, and I did this, and I did all my things. And, you know, so we really work on, I think, on daily acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. Whenever there's, like, a good subject... and. This isn't fake praise, right? No, this is, no. this is, Legit, yeah. it's genuinely saying, I appreciate that you worked really hard on that. It's not all about, you know, getting a perfect score on the test, no, but no. it's really about, I can see that, hey, you put in a lot of good effort today. Thank you for that. Because thank you for respecting our partnership. Yeah. And I think, you know, definitely when you put it in those terms too, that, you know, like you're a character in this. It's not mm-hmm. like, you're not there to just take their abuse of their whining, right? <laughs> like you you prepped all this stuff, you're teaching it, you're a part of this. And when they have put in good effort and returned that, you put in effort, they put in effort and met you that, you know, halfway, we're acknowledging that they did that. And, and, and it, it means a lot to her. You can see how proud she is. Well, and then tomorrow when she's doing her work, she's, I, I just, you're right. I don't think they're going to be complaining as much. They're not going to be, you know, upset about the things they're doing. They know, oh my gosh, if I could do a good job. You know, I can tell mom about all this great stuff I did again. And, right. you know, it's really fulfilling to me to know that, right. you know, I'm I'm doing really good and mom's really proud of me. Right? And when you finish something with her, like art or you finish something, you say to her, hey, let's put this over here where so mom, mom puts her bag. Yeah. Yeah. She comes home so mom can see it. And she's like, oh, okay, yeah, she's excited about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, another one would be kind of seeking input and feedback. And you kind of talked about this where it's this partnership. And this kind of leads into this idea of the balance between you know, the parent and the educator. Right. Getting their input, finding, you know, if they're constantly complaining about the same stuff, this is an opportunity to, you know, get their feedback. What is it that they think they don't like, especially as they get older, the younger that they are, it's kind of hard because they can't really articulate what's bugging them always. I mean, sometimes they can, but especially as they get older, just involving them in that process. You know, you got a lot of changing emotions and hormones as things as they get older, but there's a lot of valuable input that they can give you. Well, and it's okay to put your input in too. Like we've, we've been reading this book that's part of the curriculum for Build Your Library and the Ancient Civilizations. And I told my daughter the other day, and we'll, we'll put it in our probably our next video or two videos from now on YouTube. Um, and we'll talk about it. I'll be like, I'm just not digging this book anymore. And she's like, well, 
I really like it. I go, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm done with it. I don't think I want to finish this. It's like, I think we could read more valuable things we could with read, our time. We could do more valuable things with our time. And I just am not into it right now. I'd rather read you another book about ancient Greece or, you know, some gods and goddesses and type of thing and do an activity with you and, you know, color a picture of Hera together and maybe have you make your own gods and goddesses from, you know, Greece and, and whatnot you know, what would be the gods of our house, you know, that type of fun thing, then read another story about a family who stole some animal, you know, who got some wild animal, <laughs> brought it in their house, and it caused all these problems. I'm so tired of hearing these people, you know, taking wild animals and bringing it in their house, <laughs> and I'm wondering why the wild animal is causing problems. I'm just so tired of this book. It's okay for you to, to articulate that. And I, I don't, I don't pull the ripcord on, on most stuff in the curriculum. You know, I, I endure mm -hmm. <laughs> for the most part. But sometimes it's okay to say, hey, I don't like it. That also encourages my daughter to say, dad, I'm not digging this, which then can cut down on, on the complaining because if they're free to articulate that they don't like something. Right. And again, you talked about it earlier, the kind of that balance between grit and, you know, being empathetic. It's so hard. It's so hard. You want them to persevere. I just don't, I don't want her to pull the ripcord on everything, right? Right. So yeah. you don't want to force the issue when you shouldn't. And it's so hard to know. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to know. And I think that the biggest part about this is you're, you are still a parent, even though you're educating them, you're still their parent. They yeah. see you all the time and complaining can be such a huge challenge, right? Like, Assessing whether this is more pervasive than just homeschool is really important. Oh, yeah. You know, if you've got, we know, we know children that are generally whiny children. They just, <laughs> they're whiny about everything. I see them at the parent partnership. We know several of them. And, yeah. you know, that's just, that's a, that's a bigger problem, right? So knowing whether as, a, as their parent, gosh, you know, my kid really, they, they complain about a lot, right? So then that's not really about your homeschool. No. Right. That's a different problem. But if it's if it's just limited to your homeschool, hopefully some of these tips will help you. And one of the things we kind of wanted to talk about with this, just overarching, whatever the specific, you know, source of the complaining, the communication part between oh, yeah. you is so important. And if we can try that active listening and empathy we talked about starting from that place. That's my fervent goal to always start from a place of giving them the benefit of the doubt and being empathetic. But then, so we try to do a lot of that active listening and that eye language. And I remember reading some, you know, relationship books and stuff when we were first together yes. and they talked about using those I statements. Yep. This is the way that I feel. And when our kids are complaining, we've often had good success by saying, I feel like you don't appreciate the effort that I put in to prepare today's lesson. Yeah. I feel you know, when I hear you say this, I feel this way. And it really just ke keeps it all centered on you. Um, and, and I think that that helps them to see that they have an effect on other people. Mm -hmm. This isn't happening in a vacuum and they are affecting you and they're affecting their siblings probably. Um, you know, and I think that's a really important step in communicating with them, encouraging dialogue without judgment, like yeah. and, and try to be empathetic. How are you feeling? Because I'm hearing that you really hate math, but you usually like math. So what's going on? You yeah, know, and, what's going on today? Yeah, exactly. And then for really young children, um, an idea I came across that I thought was cool and I wanted to tell you about was a feelings chart oh, yeah. where your child can visually express their emotions every day. Well, and that's something that, that the pre-K Torchlight curriculum did a really I good job. I love that yeah. emotional intelligence from yeah, what was Torchlight pre-K. It was, um, you know... Was it know your feelings? Well, I, the I, cards. I, what were the cards? Yeah, it was I heard your feelings. I heard the your feelings. Cards. Yeah, Those the are good. Cards, yep. And then there was a whole bunch of just stuff about feeling. And they had these little tiles with different faces on them and things. And those were great. So if you want to do a feelings chart, that's a great like nonverbal way for kids to say right when they walk into homeschooling, like, how are they feeling about it? And what, you have a kid who's really hard to pull that information out. Like, yeah, they don't just wear it on their face or wear it off their shoulder. They, they maybe like internalize you it may a lot have a more. Five year old or something that just can't express to you that they're just kind of feeling meh today. Yeah. Right. You know, so I, I ran across that and I thought it was a really interesting idea. It's a good one. Absolutely. So for some final thoughts, you know, this is a continual process. It's going to change, obviously, as our children grow, as our life circumstances change. It's different from like day to day and week to week. Honestly, this is a super hard problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and if it's something that you're struggling with only occasionally, you are winning. Yeah. You 
are winning. <laughs> as, as you'd say in software, like you'll never be 100% bug free. No, no. And you will never like not have whining and complaining. But if you're only having it happen a couple of times a week or something, you're winning. Yeah. You're really doing great. <laughs> well, we get a lot of complaining. That's just, I think, the ebb and flow of raising children. But the problem with it we run into is that we have doubled up on something that normally we don't ex that other parents don't experience when they send their kids to private school, charter school, public school. Or with our kids a lot more during the day. We are with them all the time. And so a lot of that that complaining or those issues mm -hmm. that normally would be, you know, left to the classroom, we are carrying that load as well. And then, we are. and it blends in with everything that we do and on our daily basis as being homeschoolers or the activities that we're doing. You're right. We get a lot more time, but that's actually kind of a good thing because we get to know our kids more. We do. We can anticipate things. We can, you know, head things off on the past. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> well, and and we have a we have a fantastic opportunity, right, yeah. to teach our kids how to 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 help our kids navigate their emotions as and help them navigate things that are boring to them, things mm -hmm. that are frustrating, mm -hmm. things that are challenging, days when they don't feel their best. I mean, we get this opportunity to help them. It's just hard for us to kind of not get too frustrated ourselves yeah. in in that. But this is all part of, I think this is part of the teaching process is mm -hmm. to help them, you know, learn how to model good behavior you, yeah we're we're modeling for them and that was what we talked about with distractions right modeling mm -hmm. not being distracted um this is where we can model saying you know maybe there's days when you come into homeschooling where you don't feel very good you're getting over a cold or you're just you didn't get enough sleep you know and you might sit down one of those days and say to your child man i am really tired this morning mm -hmm. but you know what I'm here for you and we're going to do this together because I made a commitment to you that I was going to be here and do this with you, even though I don't feel my best today. Yeah. You know, like being, being honest like that is being is, honest and real it's amazing. because otherwise your kids just think like you, you can't, you couldn't possibly empathize with how they feel Yeah, exactly. when they don't realize how often you feel like crud and you still get up and you homeschool and you or do what you need to some, do. Sometimes putting into perspective the amount of work that you do do for your, your learner that it doesn't work as much with my, my four year old. When I say, yeah. I do all these things for you. What are you yeah. doing? She's like, I don't care, dad, do more. Yeah. Um, but when you have like a little bit of an older student and you walk them through your day and you know, maybe you have an eight or nine, 10, 12 year old, um, and you sit them down and you go, Hey, you know what? Daddy spent like, I don't know, a good half hour prepping homeschool yesterday. And then I spent the morning prepping your homeschool. And then I do the homeschool for two or three hours with mm -hmm. you. It's like, you know, I don't get to do things that daddy wants to do. And I'm right. working here with you. And I, this is really important to me and it's important to you and, and whatnot. And, and articulating the work you put into it, I think can also give them a little bit of appreciation for the work that you're doing for them. Yeah. You know, they need to be able to appreciate us as much. You know, we give and give and give and give so much. And, you know, when they're younger, it's, it's hard. It's our job as parents. But yeah, but it's hard for them to appreciate. It's taxing too. It's hard for them to appreciate that. Um, but when they get older, you can they can start to appreciate the work you mm -hmm. put into this. And, you know, hey, listen, mommy and daddy spent a lot of time, you know, getting this curriculum all ready for you. You know, we've put in a lot of time this this last few months. Trying to make it interesting. Yeah, and, and I'm taking you to all your classes and doing all these things. Now I'm coaching your sports and whatnot. You know, daddy does a lot and everything. And, and you know, sometimes I, I appreciate, you know, that you work hard and I just sometimes want to be appreciated as well. And it's a, it's a partnership. You, there's no reason why you can't articulate your own emotions and your own feelings to your child and being kind of the modeling of that behavior and saying, you know, I'm doing these hard things here as well. And I'm having a tough time too. You know, I, I, you know, I would love to go watch, you know, Michigan beat Ohio state for the third straight year. And, go blue. Go blue. Um, you know, things like that. Like I would like to go do that, but you know, I'm here with you and this is important to me and, and, and that type of Not thing. Not that we would ever miss the Michigan Ohio no, state I, no, I do, I But do, in no. general, I think it's a good point. That's what grandparents are for. You know, and the last thing that I think is that we'd like to leave you with is yeah. that, you know, if this is happening a lot inside homeschooling or even outside homeschooling, consider taking a break. Yeah. Consider taking a break from homeschooling, maybe taking a break from some of the other activities and things that you have regularly scheduled in your life. Maybe, you know, clear your calendar a bit. We've talked about this recently is is removing a lot of the pressures, these daily right. pressures that we have, because sometimes we put our own pressures on right. our own shoulders. And maybe for a bit, you need to remove those things. Say, hey, you know, what? we're going to take a break from homeschool. We're not going to go to practice tonight. We're going to take a break from scouts for a, a week. 
you know, take some time and really use that mm-hmm. time to connect and do really um, engaged, you know, whether that's playtime with your kids, depending on how old they are, or, you know, you're doing art or you're doing a project with them, or you're going on. You did that this night where tonight you were like, you need to go see that new Godzilla movie tonight. Tonight's your night to go see the minus one Godzilla. I'm like, okay. And she goes, I have movies and Legos to do with my daughter. Yeah. I'm like, we're busy. (laughs) We're busy. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) Right. You know, like maybe there's times that you need to do something that's really connecting cuddling on the couch yeah. and reading stories and, and whatever. It doesn't mean that you're not, you know, getting some educational benefit out of it. But if this is a problem that you're dealing with a lot, mm-hmm. then it's it's worth a break and a reconnection to figure that out. Because yep. toughing through toughing through the whole thing is just going to lead to a lot of frustration for you and for your kids. It's not going to lead to harmony in your homeschool. So we hope that this is helpful to everybody. We hope this is helpful to us, honestly, because it's something we deal with constantly. So. She's touching me. Yeah, that's a different one. Um, but we do deal with this a fair amount, and I think a lot of folks do, and it can be really tough. So yeah. I hope this is some good ideas. If you have other good ideas, please put them on the Facebook group. Help out other parents. I'm sure we could all deal with less whining in our lives. Wine one one. Call a ambulance. <laughs> we have a friend that says... Oh, uh, too bad, so sad. (laughs) Too bad, so sad. (laughs) Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!